If there were a most wanted list for the causes of global warming, we'd likely include automobiles and heavy industry as the principal offenders. But there's another major culprit lurking on virtually every street corner. Buildings. Every year, they gobble up 70% of U.S. electricity and consume 15 trillion gallons of water and 3 billion tons of raw materials like steel and wood. And buildings are responsible for roughly 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. But a movement is underway that could change all that. Sustainable architecture and sustainable buildings because there's stuff inside the building uh, not only can have a huge impact on global warming, I think they can make the key difference. In 1998, a nonprofit group called the U.S. Green Building Council established a rating system called LEED. It stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. The system provides the building industry with consistent, credible standards for what constitutes a green building. The primary goal of the U.S. Green Building Council is to promote high-performance building and to change the building paradigm, to move standard building practices towards green building practices. Its LEED system, which is becoming an industry standard, rates buildings in five key areas. Sustainable site development, water savings, energy efficiency, materials selection, and indoor environmental quality. The Green Building Council rates buildings on a point scale, giving one of four grades, certified, silver, gold, or platinum. Since 2000, the standards have been applied to more than 5,000 buildings nationwide, including the new California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. Since 1916, the Academy has resided in Golden Gate Park, but after eight decades, 100 million visitors, and one major earthquake, the historic buildings were no longer structurally sound. The oldest and largest natural history museum in the West was demolished with plans to rebuild on the same site. In 2005, construction began on the new Academy, which was designed by renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano. The day-to-day -day execution of Piano's designs is overseen by Chong Partners Architecture of San Francisco. Gordon Chong and his team realized early in the design process that this project would not be business as usual. I think it requires much more of a search than exploration. And that exploration is much more exciting intellectually in the design process than simply repeating what you've done 20 times before. When completed in 2008, the new $429 million Academy will have the highest rating of LEED Platinum certification and will be the largest public green building in the world. Where energy consumption is concerned, the new Academy presents some very special challenges. But even though it will house an aquarium, planetarium, rainforest, and natural history museum, it will still use up to 40% less energy than federal and state regulations require. One of the first steps in the process is the careful selection of materials. Jess Peterson, Vice President of WebCore Builders, the general contractor of the project, explains. For us, it comes down a lot to the material side, such as you can see the concrete here. Within the concrete, we use a combination of um, materials that are recycled from post-consumer um, and or post-industrial waste. Um, slag and fly ash, which, are, which allow for the concrete still to set up, but allows us not to have to um, you know, use uh, virgin materials in its production. 75% of the demolition waste from the old academy was recycled, and all of the building's structural metalwork will be made from recycled steel. The academy's commitment to recycled materials reaches into every nook and cranny of the construction. So these used to be my, my old Levi's 501 blue jeans, huh? 501, 502, I'm not really sure, but <laughs> Levi's definitely. Um, it's one of the major components, which is really what drives the color. It's, uh, it's that blue color because from the scraps that come from, you know, the, the cuttings on a, making the Levi and the denim, and also through some recycling campaigns that are done. And why choose cotton insulation over fiberglass? The real reason is sustainability, and, and really the mission of the Academy is, is to certainly be as uh, sustainably positive for the environment as possible, and, and this was one of the, the places that we could look to for an alternate material. The exterior design focuses on integrating and extending the surrounding natural environment. Part of this is accomplished by a massive living roof. 
You have seven hills here for the seven hills of San Francisco. The entire roof structure area is about three and a half, four acres. And the idea is that the, the top of the roof would be a living roof. 1.7 million native California plants, from wild strawberries to California poppies, will blanket the roof, providing habitat for hummingbirds, bumblebees, butterflies, and other wildlife. The plants will also provide natural insulation for the building, and rainwater collected on the roof will replace 90% of the potable water normally used to flush the building's waste. So this is the rainforest. Yes. Uh, Chong Partners feels that this will be a model, a model for the nation, a model for the world that we've had the chance of participating in. And it's a model for what we think will be a sustainable future uh, that is important to us. Architects and developers have traditionally worried about the affordability of going green. But modern green building techniques are proving to be as good for the bottom line as they are for the environment. Since 2001, software giant Adobe Systems has been improving energy efficiency at its San Jose headquarters. Some of the retrofits are surprisingly simple. For example, a $100 programming modification to the garage exhaust fans has resulted in an annual savings of $67,000 in reduced electricity costs. Water saving projects like drought tolerant landscaping have cut irrigation water use by 76% and waterless urinals have helped to reduce the company's indoor water use by 22%. This is our integrated building uh, control and monitoring system, or IBIS. All building systems are centrally controlled. Sensors monitor and regulate office lighting, air conditioning, and pretty much anything that uses electricity. This vigilance extends down to the tiniest detail. Adobe has reduced electricity use per person by 35% and natural gas use by 41%. Its efforts have resulted in three LEED Platinum certifications, making it one of the most environmentally friendly office buildings in the world. At any given time, it's much, much easier to improve the efficiency of buildings or automobiles, as far as that goes, by 10% than it is to uh, increase the world's power supply for buildings, power plants, uh, use of natural gas, refineries, and so on. It's faster, quicker, more reliable, uh, and much cheaper. Energy experts like Arthur Rosenfeld, a physicist who studied under Enrico Fermi, call such savings megawatts, or energy that is never used. To date, Adobe has invested $1.4 million for energy and environmental retrofits, which have resulted in $1.2 million in savings. With local utility, city, and state rebates added to that, Adobe's seen a total return on investment of 121%. But wealthy corporations are by no means the only players in the green building game. In January 2006, more than 100 formerly homeless individuals moved into their own studios at the Plaza Apartments in San Francisco's South of Market neighborhood. The project was the brainchild of the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency and is part of the city's commitment to applying environmentally sustainable development principles to all new affordable housing in San Francisco. I think nonprofit developers are the ones that are pushing more for sustainable design and for green design because they own the buildings long term. So durability and, ma and low maintenance are a big deal for them. One of the reasons that we developed it was to create more housing, affordable housing, for the lowest income residents of San Francisco. And secondarily, we created this building to sort of test the um, limits of, of environmentally sustainable and green approaches in affordable housing development. Project manager Aaron Carson is especially proud of the green innovations within the living spaces. We wanted them to be really homey and comfortable, have a lot of storage space. Everything we've chosen for the building is Energy Star rated and energy efficient because it's important to us that the building operating costs are maintained low. Not to mention the city's paying for it. Exactly, so. the city's paying for it, so it's important that it be efficient. And our tenants, since they are formerly homeless, a lot of them have a lot of upper respiratory issues and immune deficiency issues. So it's important for us to keep their indoor air quality really high and good. So our paints are low VOC, which is volatile organic compounds. 
our cabinetry is uh, formaldehyde free and the flooring, the uh, adhesives for the flooring is also low VOC. The Plaza's developers are pursuing LEED Silver certification, but their overall goals for this project are much more far-reaching. In terms of sourcing green materials, one thing that we're also trying to achieve is market transformation. And as we use more of these materials, the market will transform and become, those materials will become more available. High performance buildings like these are energy efficient, minimize pollution, and reduce overall environmental impact. They lower costs and are healthier for occupants. Already, some Bay Area cities, including Pleasanton, Livermore, and Novato, require new commercial buildings to meet minimum LEED standards. And San Francisco fast tracks permits for developers who voluntarily meet the basic green standards. So why isn't everyone doing it? You know, we saw the same sort of thing when the standards, the seismic standards came up. People said, oh, that's too expensive. We can't possibly meet those kind of standards. Well, now they're part of the building code in California, and we do that. Same thing with accessibility. Oh, we can't possibly do accessibility standards. That would just be too much of an impact. Well, we're hoping that green building standards will become part of the mainstream and just be how we do business.